have a bite on the floor, uh, but uh, an injunction uh, application pets. So I leave that one to Mr. Speaker to take a decision on it. But I think that a court's involvement in this will help. And uh, I, 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 I am fortified by Mr. Speaker's decision in the Adjustable case. You know, when the Adjustable case uh, arose, Mr. Speaker said declaration declaring seats vacant should not be matters to be taken lightly. Uh, it involves critical thinking, it involves processes, and it involves the court as well. Of course, people have been referring to Speaker Okwe's ruling and in the formula matters and all that, you know, but uh, it is what it is. I mean, if Speaker Okwe made a ruling so much to on a matter, uh, that, that ruling was not a court pronouncement, but that's a Speaker's ruling. Um, I am of the view that the matter was not tested at the time in the courts. This is the first time that this matter has been tested. So I would not want to go into the Speaker or query ruling. Rely on the steps I've taken and pray that the Supreme Court gives us a clear pathway on this provision. So that's about it. Thank you very much. Men and women who have been uh, elected, and I'm sure we all have a common understanding that where there is a disagreement, we need to follow due process. So I don't expect any rancor. In fact, I was happy as being served with a copy of the petition uh, of Mr. Harry Drisu. And I also indicated to him that, yes, I'm also in court on the same matter. The issue is about Article 97.1, B2EJ and H of the Constitution. So back to your question, you know, there, there, there are two arguments here. One argument says that because of these provisions, somebody who has filed as an independent candidate automatically loses a seat. My argument is that no, the filing as an independent candidate or filing on a party ticket is for the next election. Now, the argument will be different. If the person upon filing now writes to me as a head of the caucus that I have resigned today as a MPP and I'm crossing capital. I don't want to argue my case, but I think giving effect to a constitutional provision must be as far as possible practical. What was the intent of the premise and all? So um, that, that's about it. I just want to limit myself to this. So just to clarify the point. Um, as to whether uh, filing now is in good faith or not, I would say the times have changed. I am taking this step as a leader of the House, and I think that it's prudent to guide the process. In 2016, uh, 2019 or 2020, I was a backbencher. I was not the leader of the party. So I couldn't have been clothed with that capacity to take certain major decisions uh, the nature of which we are describing today. So I'm acting in good faith. And I believe that this will help settle the matter. I, I go to Supreme Court as and when it's critical to do so. The way it is, there is a matter that has been raised, and the matter has to do with a decision of a member of parliament in an election ahead of us. 
I have taken it upon myself that it is important we get a court pronouncement on this matter. And that's it. Those other questions will remain political questions. And I don't want to go into that. I want the law to, to speak. Uh, so we take it away from the politics. Uh, a political pronouncement is not the same as a legal pronouncement. And I'm sure you understand that. And uh, clarity on the court. I think I instructed my counsel to do so. Um, and I'm told it's been done. Uh, the process has been served. I may have to look at my copy of the process and I'll see the stamp and the date on it. So you would, it would be made available to you. And I'm sure it will become a public document. So don't worry at all about that. But clearly, you'll get to know, okay?